The federal government has expended more than 2 billion naira for the establishment of a satellite campus of the Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology in Dawaikim Kudu, Kano State, as part of plans to modernize and enhance training in the transport sector. In line with global best practices, Muhammad Rabiu Ali reports. The center, which was conceived four years ago, is designed to complement the Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology area in manpower production and transfer technology, as well as research in the transport sector. It consists of administrative block, technical section, simulator rooms, classes, among other facilities. Inspecting the project, the Director General NITT, Bayero Salih Hifara, said, the federal government is committed to creating an enabling environment for transport sector to remain a key player in the nation's economy. He says the Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology is repositioned to produce competent manpower in the sector. Our institute is mandated to provide um, training to Nigerians working in the transport and logistics industry. We have trained um, thousands of Nigerians in this regard. I'm proud to say that many transport organizations across the country, at state levels and at federal levels, have our trainees at high positions now. So um, our contribution to the manpower development in the transport sector is enormous and significant. The project, when inaugurated, will accommodate students from Northwest and some part of the neighboring African countries. Muhammad Rabiweli, NTN News. Nigeria's power sector has again recorded another milestone in power transmission with an enhanced all-time peak of 5,552.80 megawatts successfully transmitted through the national grid on Wednesday, January 6, 2021 at 8.15 p.m. A statement by the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, indicates that the latest all-time peak transmitted surpasses the last peak generation of 5,000 1520.40 megawatts which was also effectively transmitted by TCN on the 30th October 2020 by 32.40 megawatts the new peak TCN says shows a gradual but consistent growth in the capability of the power sector under the present administration TCN encourages all sector players to work together to ensure sustained improvement as more substations are being built with additional transformers installed in various substations nationwide for increased generation through the national grid. Meanwhile, the magistrate court sitting in Abuja has declined to deliver ruling on the bail application filed by the convener of Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Showare, and four others challenging their remand in custody by the Nigeria police force. Olabodi Arewa reports that this is sequel to the transfer of the case file from the police to the office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice in line with the laws of the land. In line with Section 174 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, the Attorney General of the Federation has a power to institute, take over, and continue or discontinue any criminal proceedings against a person before any court in Nigeria. This constitutional power is what the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice has exercised in this matter. Ruling on the bail application by Shuwere and the four other defendants it was initially slated for this Friday. However, after waiting unsuccessfully for some time for the police to bring the defendants from the first CID where they were being kept, the defense counsel, Marshal Abubakar, informed the media that the court has mandated that the defendants must first be produced before it could cease to deliver ruling on their bail application. So far to this morning, there's been nothing from the office of the DPP. So the judge has requested that the defendants in this particular matter be brought to court for them to listen to the conditions of bail. Omar Yelich Wore, Peter Williams, Joan Sonyolu, Emmanuel Bulus, and Damilari Adeola are facing three counts charge of alleged conspiracy, unlawful assembly, and incitement of the public when they embarked on a protest on New Year's Eve in the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja or Labodarewa. NT News. 
And now to the latest on the sitting strike by the Staff Union of the National Identity Management Commission. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson is at the epicenter to give us an update on the matter. Joseph, what's happening? Thank you, Najatu. Well, the backstory here is uh, that the uh, staff union of the commission under the ages of uh, the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria had a call on its members to proceed on a strike yesterday, that 7th January 2021, with the clause that all staff are to report at their duty posts but do nothing. Well, we later gather that uh, the grouse of the union against the federal government bothers on the state of NIMSI's enrollment centers across uh, the country, especially with the second wave of coronavirus uh, biting hard already. And of course, they did mention that uh, poor salary structure is uh, one of the reasons for the strike. Uh, I spoke with the Director General of uh, the Commission, Aliyo Aziz, and this is what he had to say. The management team and also the union have been in discussion and we are assured that by tomorrow we should go back to normal work. Okay, so Najatu, like you've heard, the Director General you know, said that the enrollment process will resume today. Uh, but of course, from what we are seeing here, that is yet to play out. We understand that uh, meetings are still being held to that effect. Uh, the empty chairs and of course the total silence here on the screen the fact that the strike is still far from over. I have with me here the chairman of the union, uh, Lucky Asekokai, uh, to just brief us on the latest. Could you tell us uh, what was the latest concerning the strike? As you can see, I'm just coming back for, for, from, from the meeting because yesterday uh, we, the, I was called upon to for a meeting by the management. We were with there till around 8 o'clock. Uh, they ordered me to take uh, a decision with them yesterday, I said no, that uh, our mother body are evolved, the TUC are evolved in this, that they should allow the negotiations to continue. Uh, thank God we are just coming back from a meeting. We have agreed to step down the action. Why work resume fully or the 11? Nobody will feel, um, oh, is it because I'm not a staff in that organization? Is it because you, are, you guys are the staff? Why are you guys treating us like this? No. All those things have been put into consideration based on the deadline given to Nigerians in a leak or seam with the NIN. All those were discussed and we have agreed. The minister has actually weighed in into the whole issues. As we speak, the minister requested for the 21 days ultimatum we declared. Starting county from today, the minister requested for the document. We'll be meeting with the minister on Tuesday on this to continue deliberation while work will resume in full. So okay. that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Loki Sekokai. That's uh, chairman of the union. Of course, like you've heard, uh, Najatu, uh, while they will resume on uh, 11th of January, that's Monday, uh, they, of course, uh, will also be holding meetings to press home their demands and to ensure that uh, all their demands are being met. Of course, for the greater good of uh, the process of enrollment and, of course, linking, you know, NIN with a SIM card. So that's the latest for now uh, let's hope that uh, it plays out as we have just heard from the chairman himself it's back to you we certainly hope so too joseph thank you for the update similarly many eligible enrollees in the ongoing national identification number registration exercise in delta state have been turned back by the management commission following a nationwide strike embarked upon by the staff over alleged breach of their welfare packages ngozi imokwede reports for some days now, a large number of people we are seen at the premises of the National Identification Management Commission's office in last-minute efforts to enroll for national identification number and also link their phone numbers. Surprisingly, this morning, the crowd have disappeared and the office in Delta State is under lock and key. I've been at the lock, they locked their gate. I called one of their colleagues inside. He said I should go. Today again, I came here about 5.30 a.m. again after I see some people's name, they said, okay, they should go home, that they are on strike, they are not working, they should go home to further notice. 
How do we get this thing without you people can tell us how to go online and do this thing without all this crowd, without this church we are going to? We are tired. We can do this thing online, assess it on Google, whichever way. Tell us how to do this thing in the comfort of our homes. Some of the National Identification Management Commission's staff who spoke off camera say they are on strike because since the inception of COVID-19 pandemic, no allowance has been given to them among other welfare issues. With this new decision by the National Identification Management Commission's staff, some citizens are afraid that they might not be able to meet up with the deadline for the registration set by the federal government. Yeah, they're doing all these things to us. Let them not block our line because of all these things they're doing. The federal government set the deadline for those without national identification number to register and link up their phone numbers before February 9th, while those with national identification number to link their SIM before January 19th. In Asaba, Ngozi Mokwede, NTA News. Now for more on that situation, let's join Asma'u in Sokoto for more updates. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto. As Nigerians jostle for the national identification number, the strike by the National Identification Management Agency has stalled the NIN registration in Sokoto. Applicants have, however, called for government intervention. Sheikh Mohammed Deti reports. Hopes of meeting the February 9th national identification number to SIM registration and verification deadline may face a challenge as workers of the National Identification Management Commission, NIMSI, stopped work across the country. The workers hinged the strike on several challenges, including their exposure to COVID-19 risks, lack of personal protective equipment, irregularities in promotion, and for funding. A visit to the NIMSI office in Sokoto shows the gate on the lock against people seeking to register. For now, we are doing warning strike for 44 hours, 48 hours. After 48 hours, we'll, find, we'll just go follow the process, constitutional process for independent strike. The two days warning strike did not go down well with some applicants. Nazo. Pleading of the government to consider us. Following the search to meet the deadline by billions of unregistered subscribers, the Nigerian Communications Commission announced last week an extension until February 9th to block mobile SIM cards of citizens without national identification numbers while subscribers that have obtained their identification numbers have until January 19th, 2021 to link their mobile SIM cards with their national identity numbers. The Nigerian government has given a deadline for telecom operators to register mobile phone users amid concerns that unregistered SIM cards are being used by criminals and insurgents. In Sokoto, Shu Muhammad Deti, NTA News. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has pledged to deploy more effective strategies to defeat armed banditry in the country. He stated this at the personal parade of Batch B Special Constabulary in Sokoto. Sheikh Mohamed Deti again reports. Following the directives of President Mohamed Buhari to commence the implementation of community policing strategy across the country, the Nigerian police has graduated another set of 704 batch B constabulary officers from Sokoto and Kibi states. The Inspector General of Police, represented by AIG Zone 10, Mohamed Mustafa, said the engagement of special constabularies for local policing will complement the effort of regular security agencies to fight crime and banditry in the zone. He tax the trained personnel to participate in intelligence gathering tracking and enforcement within the ambit of the law. It is hoped that they are going to inject, you know, uh, actually they are going to contribute their own quota to the policy in this country. You know, this is a joint venture with the government and the state government. And all these people that have passed out, they are going back to their respective communities. The 704 special constabularies were drawn from all the local government areas of the two states that formed the second batch of the trained officers. They were given the required training that will enable them to contribute in tackling insecurity particularly at the grassroots. Governments of the two states assured the special constables of protection and support, ensuring they have necessary tools to operate. The trained officers will be deployed to their communities for optimal operation. 
in Sokoto show Muhammad Dati NTA News and that's it from here it's back to Najatu in Abuja good afternoon although social media as a channel of communication is in a Social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. Do you know that 35% of every girl, child and women are raped on a daily basis? Some are killed in the process. Some take their lives in shame. Others remain emotionally dead for life. It is sad. This culture is not art. Definitely not African. How did we allow bad culture to infiltrate and take over even if you lack fear for the law what of fear of god and you why do you cover up rape acts when it happens remember a problem share is a problem have solved never cover any rape act because a rapist is a murderer it could be you or your loved ones next women must be treated like the prize gen they are say no to rape from dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264, or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk. App for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. A new edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the game changer, His Excellency Governor Abdullahi Suley of Nasarawa State. Broadcasting in a digital economy, Maxwell Loco gives an insight. This edition also features Nancy Naji of AIT, a name synonymous with business. Meet the NCDC boss, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu. TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also x rays the relevance of social media in the modern society. Meet some TV professionals who have impacted their spaces and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. If you're just joining us, this is NTA Nationwide. It's time to join Adiola in Lagos for more reports on COVID-19. Thank you, Nadja, too. The Federal Ministry of Works and ordered the immediate closure of the airport road link bridge following the recent tanker fire accident at Toyota along the Papa Oshodi Expressway. Dotsun Oguyemi reports. Yet another tanker fire accident has put Lagos in the The latest incident, which comes barely a week into the new year, has left ongoing road rehabilitation along the 200-meter stretch from Toyota bus stop along the Apapa Ushodi Expressway in dire need of recasting of on the road surface and median barricades. The accident also caused to question the integrity of one of the pillars causing the airport link bridge in place. Who came yesterday, the bridge was barricaded, but unfortunately, 
is has been removed. So we are appealing to the public to please desist from doing so because it's very risky. We don't know the uh, condition of this, this bridge by now. With the closure, motorists are to be diverted through Ladipo, but the state government is concerned about the activities of residents along the axis. Mushi, there's a bypass, Aladi Akumi. Last year we commissioned that road. It's a rigid pavement, it's a road. So if we block this, we'll try to create the alternative route and see what we can do to relieve people and bust out. We will keep doing, but if you go there, if you go there now, that's what I'm saying, people must take responsibility and ownership. That road was done last year in rigid pavement. If you go in there, half of the road is filled with refuse. It's filled with refuse, it's filled with engines from the motor parts the federal and state government also renewed calls to enforce relevant road laws, especially as it concerns road boardiness and movement of articulated vehicles. In Lagos, Dotson Ukunyemi, NTA News. Now, two persons have been arrested with the issuance of fake COVID-19 test results. The Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, Naimar, disclosed this while reacting to a media publication on alleged sharp practices at the Institute. Kendi at ABC reports. On Tuesday, the 29th of December 2020, the media organization aired a news item on alleged sharp practices going on at the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, one of the approved drive-through centers for COVID-19 tests. Following investigation by the Institute, it was discovered that two persons allegedly involved a NADA staff nor agent of the Institute. The DG, Naima Babatunde Salako said their confession revealed that they have been visiting the facility under the guise of coming for COVID-19 tests and in the process made away with COVID-19 testing request forms belonging to the Institute which they used to fabricate fake results to the unsuspecting public. The suspects by names Enoch Basian and Vesin Binra were caught in the act while they were trying to do COVID-19 tests for one of our staff who acted as dummy patient at the front of a bank at Solo, Lagos. Another two individuals, a staff of the Institute in charge of the testing request form, the DG said is currently being investigated, while a security man who granted interview to the media agency is at large. Professor Salako, who stressed the need for a balanced reportage, said that all COVID-19 test results are sent electronically via the Institute's official email, and any results issued by other sources should be disregarded and reported to appropriate authorities. The DG reassured the public of the Institute's unreserved commitment towards the discharge of its mandate. In Lagos, Kendi, ADBC, NT News. And that's it from Lagos. Naja 2 is back to you. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced 1,565 new cases of COVID-19 across the country. Out of the new infections, Lagos has again recorded the highest number with 807 cases, followed by the FCT with 236. Kaduna, 79 new cases, Oyo, 57, Plateau, 47, Rivers, 37, and Kazuna, 35. Other states recording new cases are Edo and Sokoto with 30 new cases each. Delta 26, Kebbi 23, Ondo 20, Enugu 18, Abia and Ogun 17 each, Benue 16, Bayelsa 15, Bauchi 14, Niger 13, Kano 10, Borno 6, Imo 5, Ekiti 4, Oshun 2 and Jigawa 1. The total number of confirmed cases in Nigeria has risen to 95,934, with 77,982 patients discharged. Unfortunately, 1,330 people have now died from the, of the virus in Nigeria. 
The federal government is hopeful that the COVID-19 vaccines will be available in the country by the end of January 2021. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria say 100,000 doses of the vaccine are being expected, but administration will not start until the second quarter of the year. Alika Opanachi Arua reports. The move by the federal government to acquire the COVID-19 vaccines to curb the spread of the virus in Nigeria has been generating a lot of controversies from the public on its efficacy and possible side effects. Alleviating the fears of the public, Guess on Good Morning Nigeria says the vaccine will be tested and approved by NAVDAC first before being administered to the public. I know uh, government has a plan to bring more vaccine, as they're saying, like 42 million doses for 20%. And on top of that, um, government has also planned uh, using its own resource to bring more vaccines. So it's a, it's a, it's a strategy evolving. The guests also stated that Pfizer is Nigeria's choice of the vaccine as it suits Nigerian temperature level. They also maintain that healthcare workers and other frontline workers will be the first to benefit from the vaccine before others in the first rollout and will be administered in two doses. It's not about which vaccine is recommended for Africa or elsewhere. It's about which vaccine works. And they have to prove beyond any doubt that it's, it's effective but and it's safe. For us that are in public health, we have to put in the effort that is required to present the information to create awareness about vaccines. So uh, when you talk about uh, those conspiracy theories uh, around, oh, they want to depopulate Africans, right? You know, those stories have always been there from anti-vaccination elements. They also emphasize the need to educate the public on the importance of taking the vaccine when available while still adhering to all safety protocols in Abuja, Alika, Opanachi, Arua. And still on COVID-19, the second wave of the infection has raised concerns over the negligent attitude of Nigerians. With the world working towards reliable vaccines, the need for people to obey reimposed guidelines and protocols has come to the fore. Against this backdrop, Austin Edemodu examines the dangers of flouting the guidelines as well as the prospect of a local vaccine against the infectious disease. The pandemic is once again spreading like wildfire as the second wave of the pandemic hits countries of Europe and America, in most cases resulting in high rate of fatalities, while total or partial lockdown has been reimposed. In Nigeria, the number of infected persons has risen to more than 94,369, with the highest number of 1,664 new cases on a single day since the second wave. Despite the reimposition of the COVID-19 guidelines and protocols in Nigeria, most Nigerians seem to be adamant of the obvious risk of flattening the directives. With this kind of crowd behind me, it sends a wrong signal on the attitude of Nigerians towards averting the escalation of the COVID-19 pandemic. We felt the COVID-19 has, has gone naturally the way it came, so everybody is living their normal life. Most infectious diseases, epidemics that come like this, pandemics, most times you have a second wave. Because um, when the first one would have gone down, people would relax. Ah, we've been locked down. People are, it's like letting the bed out of the cage. So people throw caution to the wind and all those um, preventive measures. As at the time of this report, two persons have been placed on isolation with one new death as authorities reopen isolation centers across the Delta State. It's a gradual increase in the number. We have commenced testing. We can do testing in the hospital now. And so we're able to make our diagnosis quickly and intervene when we need to. Um, the advice to Nigerians is uh, for them to take precaution. As a scramble for the trials and administration of the COVID-19 vaccines takes center stage in some countries of the world, there are suggestions that Nigeria must rise up to the challenge of providing the vaccines to over 206 million of her population as a stitching time saves nine. I'm Austin, a demo to NTA News. Now, did you ever think that a piece of cloth over your nose and mouth would someday be a life-saving tool for humans in a situation which today is largely referred to as the new normal? In this report, 
Cecilia Julius investigates why some people disregard the use of the face mask despite its indication as a transmission virus reducer. The pronouncement of a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic in the nation by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC. Shock waves greeted the people, which called for more proactive measures to curtail its spread. While some people were nonchalant about precautionary measures, others view the transmission of the virus serious and are making sure that the disease is kept at bay. One item used to stem the spread of the pandemic and stay healthy is the face mask. But is the face mask effectively fighting this transmission? The importance of a face mask cannot be overemphasized, especially when you're in an area where it's a little bit crowded or in public places. You must use a face mask. In spite of government's calls and spread of information on the use of the face mask, Mask to fight the pandemic. Why are people still adamant? People find it easy to believe falsehood because falsehoods tend to be convenient. So when you believe that COVID-19 is not there, then you don't have to wear a face mask. You don't have to do what seemingly feels inconveniencing to them. And therefore, if anybody sells something to you that, oh, this is false, it becomes easier for you to believe. Where I know that I sit with a lot of people that we are not spread as it is, I will use it. If every individual we are head to the uh, putting on the face mask, it will protect us a lot. Experts say obeying preventive safety protocols for one is safety for all. In Calabar, Cecilia Julius, NTA News. And the schools in Akwa Ibom State resume for the concluding part of the first term of the 2020-2021 academic year. Education administrators have pledged to intensify academic activities to make up for lost time while strictly adhering to COVID-19 precautions. Ifoma Aihoji has details. Just the beginning of the school, we had to do a lot of practicals in biology, chemistry and physics. School was interesting and I learned so much things in school today. We were taught so many subjects while observing the COVID-19 measures, so it was safe and it was also very fun. These children are not just vibrant in their academic programs, they are also very cautious of their health while in school, especially in the face of the second wave of COVID-19. Um, we wore our face masks and and we did social distancing, so we can't touch anyone physically. And we don't shake or hug, we fist bomb with each other. We have to keep that because we don't want to catch the COVID-19. For teachers and administrators, safety of the children is paramount, hence the commitment to providing adequate preventive materials with intense supervision to ensure compliance among pupils and students. As they come in, they wash their hands, as they go into their classes, all the children have their personal hand sanitizer and our teachers are also wearing their shields to ensure that transmission does not go from any staff. The junior sections will come to school on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesdays. Then the senior sections will come to school on Thursday, Fridays and Saturdays so that we can maintain social distancing. Meanwhile, some stakeholders are calling on government to make provisions for more classroom blocks in public schools to reduce the number of children assigned to a class. In Uyo, Ifoma Aikoje, NTN News. And from Uyo, we head straight to our Meiduguri studio where Abubakar is standing by. Good afternoon to you, Naja Atu. Now, Borno State Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has arrested one Hassan Mohammed Ebere of Goni Damgari buying quarters ward in Meduguri, selling dead chickens to the unsuspecting public. The suspect was paraded before newsmen at the NSCDC's command office in Meduguri. Memuna Garba completes the story. 
arrested the suspect, the NSCDC's PRO, DSC Blues James, while briefing the press on the arrest, said the suspected dead chicken seller was arrested at a river bank behind BRTV while preparing dead chickens for commercial purpose. According to the PRO, the suspect was apprehended with 16 chickens, saying he admitted processing an average of 10 to 15 chickens during each of his acts. DSC Blues James said further investigation by the command reveals that the suspect also smokes the dead chickens for sale in the name of bushmeat. He took advantage of the open waste disposal. He picked dead animals, particularly chickens. His customers are located around Gomari Kostin, Bulunkutu, and Wulari General Area. We deem it fit to bring this to public awareness, considering the health challenges this might pose to the general public. The suspect, Hassan Mohamed Eberi, in an interview admitted committing the act, saying he has nothing doing, hence the selling of the dead chicken to make money. In my degree, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. Borno State Government has donated 10 million naira to the state chapter of the Nigerian Legion. This was during the launching of the Emblem Appeal Week and decoration of the state governor by the Legion. Mohamed Goni has more details. Amposes Remembrance and Emblem Appeal Week is an annual event designed to reflect on the sacrifices of members of the armed forces in various operations towards securing lives and property as well as the territorial integrity of the nation. Governor Wagana Omar assured continued support of the state government to the ex-servicemen and families of the fallen heroes. The governor who pledged to look into requests made by the members of the Legion, including land for farming activities, charged them to use funds raised to come up with programs that will add value to lives of members and their families. We will link up with the governor of the state, with the garrison commander, to make adequate arranging at my own level to support you. Chairman of the Borno State Branch of the Nigerian Legion, Colonel William Mamza retired, noted the continued support of Governor Zilum to the cause of the association and appealed for more support to the orphans and widows of the fallen heroes. He also expressed their desire to key into the 25-year development plan of the state government through agriculture and solicited for allocation of farmlands to the members, among others. In Maiduguri, Mamad Goni, NTA News. We're on to nationwide on the largest television network in Africa, the NTA. Time now to return to Najatu in Abuja. Najatu. Thank you, Abubakar. Welcome back from Meiduguri. We'll take a break and return with more security reports. Life can be very eventful. We curiously expect things to happen, even when we don't know what. Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. 
TA News 24. A 24 hour news station brings to you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m., news update at 11 and 1 p.m., news desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., and late evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV Channel 419, Bo TV Channel 46, Star Times Channel 101, and Free TV Channel 703. Jealous. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. The Directorate of Defense Media Operations, DMO, says the Air Task Force of Operation Life Adoli has inflicted heavy casualties on Boko Haram terrorists in the Sambisa forest area of Borno State, destroying their hideouts in Alagarno, including a compound housing some high-value Boko Haram leaders. DMO Coordinator Major General John Enenche says the compound, concealed under thick vegetation and located 2.3 kilometers north northeast of Kaffa was being used by the terrorists to coordinate nefarious activities. The destruction of the locations was achieved through multiple airstrikes executed on 6 January 2021 as the Air Task Force dispatched Nigerian Air Force attack aircraft to engage the target areas in day and night raids leading to the neutralization of the terrorists. The Armed Forces of Nigeria says it will not relent until all enemies of the nation are neutralized and normal is restored to all troubled zones. And following credible intelligence, troops of Operation Wellstroke in the early hours of 7 January 2021 successfully conducted a rescue operation at Mararaba Odege in Nasara, local government area of Nasara State, rescuing three kidnapped persons. A statement by the coordinator, Defense Media Operations Major General John Enenche, indicates that one of the bandits was eliminated in the battle which ensued. Major General Enenche notes that the armed forces will not relent until all enemies of the country are neutralized and normalcy is returned to all troubled zones. Meanwhile, in an effort to combat smuggling, irregular migration and other crimes along Nigeria's borders following the reopening, the operation Operation Swift Response, launched in August 2019 and coordinated by the Office of the National Security Advisor, has transformed into Nigeria's Joint Border Patrol Team as part of a tripartite operation comprising Nigeria, Niger and the Republic. In a statement by the Public Relations Officer of the Nigeria Customs Service, Joseph Atta, who is also the spokesperson of the Joint Patrol, the National Security Advisor, Babagana Monguno, and for sizes, the Joint Border Patrol will be adequately administered and implores the team to remain uncompromising. Atta further states that a year and four months into the operation, 1,401 irregular migrants have been arrested while seized items valued at 12 billion 538 million 333,545 naira 50 kobo have been seized. U.S. President Donald Trump calls for end to violence and pledges smooth transfer of power after Capitol riot choice. Ometu has details. U.S. President Donald Trump has acknowledged that Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States and said his focus now is on a peaceful transition of power, a day after his supporters violently attacked the United States Capitol. The statement marks a shift in tone for Trump, who has spent months claiming without evidence that the election was marred by widespread fraud. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, 
you will pay. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. Meanwhile, a U.S. Capitol Police officer has died of injuries sustained during clashes with supporters of President Trump. U.S. Capitol Police, in a statement, said that the officer, Brian Sicknick, had sustained injuries while physically engaging with protesters during Wednesday's riots. He is the fifth person to die because of the scuffle. Resultantly, U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sand is resigning amid criticism of the department's response to the protests. Reports say Sand's resignation will go into effect on January 16, just a few days of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. In the meantime, U.S. law enforcement authorities have opened a criminal investigation into Wednesday's attack on U.S. Capitol by pro-Trump rioters, enlisting hundreds of investigators to identify and arrest the perpetrators. Acting U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Michael Sherwin, said 15 people have been charged in the federal court in Washington, while 40 others were charged in D.C. Superior Court in the lead-up of the riots, most of them for unlawful entry into Capitol grounds. Joyce Ometu, NTA News. Now, what would have been a catastrophic, what would have been catastrophic by way of fire outbreak was averted at Elibrada community in Emohua, local government area of River State, as a gas pipeline belonging to Adrip Oil Company exploded. In the late hours of Wednesday, Robinson Derati Day reports that government and concerned agencies were at the scene of the incident to prevent further damage. The pipeline is a 36 GTS 4 gas delivery line from Rumuji through Elibrada to the Boni Export Terminals reportedly installed in 2006. The excavation around the pipeline and some sophisticated equipment discovered indicates that it might be a third party sabotage. <laughs> There are insinuations also that the saboteurs may have been searching for PMS only to discover gas and allowed it to explode to save their lives. This is raw gas. Everywhere we are covered, even up to the community where people live, we are covered with smell of gas. People were closing their mouth with their rapper and everything. We could not come because of the noise we are hearing from this side of the farm road. We are peace abiding people. We are pleading that government should come and satisfy this thing. The inability of the company to clear the right of way of the pipeline may have given easy access to the illegal operation. We've caught on the area to make sure that further damages do not occur. They are lucky that there was no fire explosion. Officials of the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency and other concerned agencies were on ground for investigation. From Elibrada in River State, Robinson Delateide, NTN News. Now for sports news, Golden Eaglets face Black Starlets in Under-17 Championship in Togo. Details with our sports desk. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. We begin with talent discovery and development. As the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development says, it remains committed to hosting the National Youth Games this year. The annual event could not hold in the year 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic, but the Director of Grassroots Sports Development in the Ministry, Ademola Are, says the NYG is next in line after the National Sports Festival built for February. The lives of the youth are very important. So we are hoping that um, COVID-19 will really enable us to do what we are supposed to do. To football now, the Nigeria Professional Football League enters match day three this weekend with Aqua United hosting Abia Warriors in Saturday's sole match. On Sunday, MFM FC and Sunshine Stars go head to head. Champions Plateau United host Heartland while Lord Leaders Nasarawa United welcome Canopy to the Lafayette Township Stadium. 
Meanwhile, the Nigeria Football Federation has challenged the national under-17 football team, the Golden Eaglets, to go for victory against their Ghanaian opponents at the Wafu B Under-17 Championship in Togo on Saturday. Coach Fatah Amo's boys, after losing their first group game, must beat the Black Starlets to stand a chance of progressing beyond the group stage. And NFF President Amaju Pinik has charged the team to show their strong winning mentality against their West African rivals. And finally, Formula 1 giants Mercedes are confident that reigning World Drivers Champion Lewis Hamilton will sign a contract extension. Reports claim that the seven-time World Champion has made a list of demands which is holding up the deal. And that will be all on Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. On a sad note, President Mohamedou Buhari has condoled with the family of former Minister of Aviation and 12th Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Nsika Kabasi ACN Edwok, describing his death as a huge loss to the nation, particularly all those he inspired and mentored in tactical air operations. In a statement, the President joins the military in mourning the passing of the highly decorated former officer who spent more than two decades updating his pilot skills in the United Kingdom, United States and former Soviet Union returning to the country to share his experience with colleagues and younger officers. President Buhari also commiserates with the government and people of Akwaibom State, friends and associates of the deceased, affirming that he lived a life of service to the nation and humanity with distinguished results in all endeavors. And on that note, we conclude the news on NTA Nationwide. Thanks for watching. hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch NTA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet and phone. Log on to visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment. Then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices to watch NTA International on the go. Anywhere in the world. NTA International. Your window to the world. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus.
Elizabeth Abai. I am here to talk about facts. There is so much misinformation and distortion out there, especially on the social media. All it takes is just a click and the fake news goes viral. However, here on NTU, we deal with facts. My job is to go out there and comb for factual news and information, just the way it is, all in the interest of the nation. I'm Naja Atutijani. Beyond the NCA, we present only the facts, verified. Beware of fake news, don't be a victim. Stay tuned to the NCA. Especially at this time of the coronavirus pandemic. My name is Namde Ojiko. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV. This is the network service of the NTA. about the wicked farmer. Are you ready to hear the story? Yes! A long time ago, in a very far away village, there lived a farmer whose name is called Ugo. Ugo wanted to start his planting season by planting some crops. Walking, walking. I just want, what is your problem again, eh? What is your problem? I guess since when did you become so naggy and unreasonable? Why wouldn't I lag? Oh, God, man. Why wouldn't I lag? When it is the planting season and you have not even now so far, far, far started to plant anything. This one, are you the one saying this? Are you saying this? I, did, I have my farmland already and I have brushed. <laughs> <laughs> you have brushed. Oh, Damien, what will you call a farmland without seed? Oh, you have forgotten? It is called barren. Barren? Yes. I just want barren. I just want watch your tongue. Watch your tongue, oh! Because it, 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 you insult me with those words. I de, see, let me tell you. Osanu does, Osanu God knows that I try hard <laughs> to feed this family. You are trying. Hard working man. You better try harder. You better work more harder because.